discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new and you're looking to get started in rat hunting, you're in the right place. I'm gonna show you guys as much detail as I can, kind of how to get started, the gear that you're gonna need, anywhere from entry level all the way up to some of the high-end stuff that I use on a regular basis. I've been doing this for a long time. I've taken literally thousands of rats with air guns and I'm gonna pass that information on to you guys in this video. Just a couple of rats can turn a place upside down in a matter of months. They reproduce so quickly and it's important to get a handle on the situation and air guns are a great tool. They can quickly and effectively take a lot of rats. They can put a huge dent in the population. We've taken permissions that have had literally thousands and thousands of rats down to zero in just a matter of a couple weeks. That's a much better success rate than you can ever get with any kind of poison. I typically go with 22 caliber, although 177 is more than effective. I like to stick around 12 foot-pound power levels and that's simply because a lot of the shots that I take might be out to 20 plus yards but typically it's within 10 to 15. One of the other reasons I prefer going with lower powered air guns is because a lot of these locations are indoors. You've got expensive farm equipment that you don't want to damage. You don't want to have ricochets that are going to go into other animals. And these are things that you really have to think about, um, especially on a commercial type property. In my own backyard, you know, I've got neighbors and you don't want something that's loud. And that's another reason I like going with the lower powered guns. Um, with a moderator, they're a whole lot quieter. So to keep things simple, you might want to consider, you know, what your scenario is. Are you going to be going after a lot of rats at a time? Or are you gonna be going after you know, a few rats in your own backyard once in a while? The next thing we'll talk about is optics. Now, this is an example of a gun that I used years ago. This is probably one of the first guns that I put together for specifically hunting rats. This is a Crossman Mark I. It's got a 12 inch Lothar Walther barrel. It's got a moderator on here. It's pretty quiet. It's got a shoulder stock and it also has a dot sight and it also has a regulated tank that I can fit on here. It's very accurate. I've taken literally thousands of rats with it. Tape a flashlight onto the barrel here and walk around and, and hunt rats with that and it was very effective. The downside to this is it's single shot. You know, this is the kind of gun that would probably work pretty well, you know, for my backyard where I'm in a fixed position and, you know, I only have a couple rats that come in once in a while. Um, it's fine, you know, to have that. But if you've got literally thousands of them that you're going after, it gets old having to reload this after every shot. And believe me, you get really used to it. Um, it's dark in these buildings. And so in the beginning, you know, I was fumbling around, you know, trying to load and uh, it kind of did get frustrating, but this was a real nice gun, it still is. I haven't shot it in a while, but it's an excellent example as to what works for rat hunting. In the early days, we were using you know, simple flashlights that worked really well, but the problem with that is the rats get really skittish, especially after you've taken a lot of them. I like the green light. Um, I've got friends that swear by the red light. Personally, I've never really seen much of a difference between the two. And that would be probably the most inexpensive setup, you know, if you're looking to go after rats in the night. They got some good ones on the market that do have a dimmer switch. And you can also manipulate the, the lens to really, you know, focus the beam and if you've got a scope, you can also set it up as kind of like a poor man's night vision. And essentially what that is, you're mounting a laser to the gun and you're zeroing it with the center of your scope at a set particular range. And that was very effective. It works really well on rats, um, even from a fixed position. The next step up from using a flashlight or a laser would be using some kind of clip on night vision unit. This has a built-in IR. This will clip on to just about any scope. 
I think these can be had for under $300. This is more on the budget end of what you're gonna find in night vision. They're pretty effective for a lot of the rats that I've hunted in the past. If you're not looking to spend a lot of money on some of the higher end stuff that's available now. The next step above a clip-on unit would be a dedicated night vision. As an example, this is put out by Part Optics. This is the Night Stalker 4K. It's got a built-in rangefinder. It's got the ballistic capabilities, so you can dial in your bullet weight, velocity, everything, and it's gonna tell you your correct holdover for various ranges. Now, I use these for not only rats, um, but I do a lot of coyote hunting. I do a lot of pig hunting, and so it's critical for me to have that information when I'm out in the field at various ranges so I know exactly where my shot's gonna go. And that's really critical when you're inside a building going after these rats. Maybe not as necessary if you're gonna be in your backyard um, in a fixed position you know, at 15 yards like I am. And the nice thing about these are they're not very heavy, they're not very bulky, and they mimic a traditional rifle scope very closely. In my opinion, the next step up from a dedicated night vision unit would be thermal. Um, the rats simply cannot hide from it, especially if you're hunting areas that have a lot of debris, a lot of junk, which is pretty common around areas that have a lot of rats. The other benefits to a thermal device is they get really good battery life. They're not having to run an IR light, um, which eats a lot of batteries, and they don't seem to be as affected um, by cold weather. Um, they don't seem to be affected by fog. Um, which is sometimes an issue when we go into some of these large buildings. And that can be an issue um, for a lot of you guys that might have colder temperatures. Um, they seem to do a little better than a standard night vision. As far as rat hunting goes, accuracy is really the key. It's important to find a really accurate gun. Um, we want to be ethical and we want to be safe in the way that we hunt them. Because um, as I mentioned, a lot of times we're indoors, and so it's important to really be careful and get out there and practice and really know your gear. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the best pellet to, to use? And the best answer is the one that's the most accurate out of your gun. You gotta get out there, you gotta do some practice, you gotta find a pellet that works. Um, you know, we're dealing with lower powered air guns here and it doesn't take a whole lot of energy to kill a rat. A lot of people ask me about bait stations and that's not really something that I use because um, a lot of the areas such as my backyard already have rats. A lot of the permissions that we go to already have rats. Um, so it's not really necessary for us to bait them in. But rats are creatures of habit. They do follow the same path. And so a lot of times it's necessary to put something out for them to just stop long enough for you to take a shot. I found that peanut butter works pretty well. Some rats like fruit, you can usually use bird seed. Um, those three things usually work pretty well for me. I know there's people that have all kinds of concoctions that you know they're using to attract rats, um, but that's not really what I'm trying to do in my particular situation. There's a lot of miscellaneous items that we use, you know, depending on the situation. Um, if I'm here, a lot of times I'll put a ding-donger out in my back shed. And that's a remote driveway alarm. They work really well. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks. Another thing is a headlight. It's good to be hands-free if you're going to be walking around. Good to have something that you can see um, to reload your magazine. Um, look to see where you're going to sit down. Another thing we bring is a bucket along with a grabber because um, we do like to recover the rats. We don't like to leave them there to rot. Um, we dispose of them properly. Another thing that I bring with me is a chest rig. I really like these because they're right in a spot that I can reach easily. I keep a power bank in here along with a cord that I can plug into my night vision unit 
And so I can pretty much run all night long. Or, you know, just carry some extra batteries, some pellets, um, extra magazines. Um, I usually keep a handheld flashlight and some gloves in here as well. Two, depending on your situation, you know, some shooting sticks, uh, maybe a tripod, even a, a folding camping chair is something that I bring with me quite often because a lot of times inside these buildings, you know, we'll sit because um, we might be in a situation where they're all in one area and you might be sitting there for a while um, to look for activity. Regardless if I'm in my backyard or out on a big permission, my main goal is to try to be as ethical and as safe as possible. And part of that is really getting practice in with your gear, getting to learn it. You know, don't be afraid to not take a shot if it just doesn't feel safe. And so it's really critical to really think about that um, regardless of whether you're in your backyard or out on that permission, you know, really think about safety. So I really hope I was able to share in good detail some tips for you guys if you're looking to get out and do some rat hunting. A lot of the stuff that I shared with you is just things that I've learned over years of hunting them. I've taken literally thousands of rats. Air guns are a very effective tool. Um, I will leave links in the description for you guys if you're interested in any of this gear. But I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you guys enjoy this content and you're willing to support us and you enjoy coffee as much as I do, I encourage you to visit our shop page. We have a newly designed labeled coffee from Mountain Sport Air Guns called Headshot. It's really good coffee and the proceeds to that go directly back into the channel. You can visit our shop page at mountainsportairguns.com and it's a good way to support us.